at 11.15 and uh, got a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, everyone that's here is here for the duplicate migrations uh, overview. Uh, uh, we're basically going to be covering how to migrate content into Drupal, what are the strategies to use, as well as how to go about doing it. Uh, my name is Sulman Jaffrey. I'm a developer at Cofort Labs. Uh, you can uh, find me on Drupal.org under the moniker SJPeter79. You can also find me on the Drupal Slack group uh, under the same name. And uh, I also have a bunch of content on GitHub um, that you can uh, find under the same name as well. If you guys want to win a Google Home, uh, just come see me afterward. I'll have some stickers and some other stuff, so um, I'll tell you exactly how you can go about doing that. All these... Okay, so all the slides and everything are at that address. All the codes there, all the names are there. Um, this is a uh, migration we did at Statscan uh, for the Open Data platform there. We did Drupal 7 to the migration, so all the code for that is there. That's a really good reference tool. You should also check out the Drupal Slack group. There's a lot of good developers on there for reference. And the session video is going to be here. Okay. So today's agenda is basically we're going to look at some migration basics. Uh, what exactly do you need to do to get started with doing migration? We're also going to be looking at the different types of migrations that you can perform. Then we're going to go into actually how you actually go about doing a migration. So that's going to be all the migration breakdown. Then we're going to do a live demo for Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 migration. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. We have a lot of things to cover. <laughs> okay, so before you start, uh, start doing the migration, you've got to figure out exactly what do you want to move over? How are you going to get there? What, where's your starting point? Where's your end point? Right? There's no quick way to get there, unfortunately. There are some ways you can kind of get there, but there's no real quick way to get there. But, you can actually build a plan that can get you there in a timely manner. And there's also no one way to get there. You can get, you have to get there through a combination of ways. So, uh, this is basically a migration overview. Whenever you have a migration, you have a source, a destination, and things in the middle that basically melt all the stuff into one thing. So in this example, we're basically migrating over to users. We have a user with all this information. We have a destination that is applied to, and then we have a like migrate map, something that's linking all this information together. So when you, for example, you're moving from one house to another house, right? You need to know exactly where all the different components of that new house is. So you move everything over to as well. In Drupal 8, unlike Drupal 7, uh, you also need to understand what exactly can you move over. Because in Drupal 7, what you could do was only migrate content over. Oh, before I even start. Uh, how many of you actually have used the migrate module in Drupal 7? Uh, have you guys touched Drupal 8's migration? No? Okay. Okay, so, yeah, that, I should have asked that first. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, so, what you, when you're planning things out, you need to actually understand what can you actually migrate over. Uh, if you don't understand it, uh, then basically you need to make a checklist of things you, that you actually want to move over. Do you want to move over all the same content types? Do you want to move over all the taxonomy? Do you want to move over uh, I don't know, all your kitchen appliances to a new location, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so a lot of that stuff you can do uh, without actually having to recreate that on the other side. Right? So if you didn't want to recreate all your content types, you could export all that as configuration, right, from your previous Drupal 7 site. Uh, 
but this is this, this yeah. Anyways, let's go. On. <laughs> okay. So then there's of course the Tyson migration. There's a lot of different ways to get to your destination. You need to actually have some sort of plan, some sort of way of doing it, right? So I mean, you can load everything up into a truck and hopefully get there, right? Maybe you'll stand away with all your cargo. So there's basically three major types. Actually, there's a fourth one. I'll get into that. Uh, there's three major types. There's manual labor, right? You're basically copying and pasting content. You're basically going into your source, looking at what's there, going into your destination, creating what's there, all right? So it's basically a lot of manual steps, a lot of copy and paste. Then you have your Drupal to Drupal migrations, which are built into Drupal 8's uh, migrate module. Uh, then you have custom Drupal migrations. Now, anytime you're doing a migration, it's not only one thing, of one of these types. It's a combination of these types. So the manual migrations, these are very slow and tedious because you're basically copying and pasting. Uh, but it does allow you a, great, great, a lot of control in regards to what you're actually doing. Uh, so because you can go into your source and see, oh, I got my contents this way. Maybe I can turn this into a paragraph type or something. All right? So I can maybe uh, do something different on the other end side. But of course, you can move, it's fine for moving a small set of data over, but it's not really great for making moving up large chunks of data. Then of course you have your Drupal to Drupal migrations. These are this is the Drupal upgrade path that's already built into the migrate module. Uh, and it's very easy or not, depending on what you're trying to do. Because if you're doing the Drupal to Drupal migration, you can only migrate over what Drupal 6 or Drupal 7 core can actually understand that they actually have. Right? And if there's synchronous modules involved in that stuff, well, guess what? They're not going to move over. Uh, so you're going to get like a partial framework, and then you're going to have to go into each one of those files and try to figure out exactly what needs to be added and what, not, what doesn't. So it doesn't allow for a great deal of refactoring. But, but there is a middle ground. There's what's known as a partial Drupal to Drupal language. Uh, I know this is a bit of a this is just a brush command that has, that has brush migrate upgrade. You pass in your source SQL site and you do what is in fake all. And what that does is it lets you move your framework of your site over without any of the content. So what, what that will let you do is basically uh, you have your structure. Oh, I want to just refactor a few things here and there. Then I'll start moving the content up. You know, it gives you a lot more control in regards to doing that. Of course, it's not like breaking a house in half, but uh, it's, it's, yeah. Then you have your custom Drupal migrations. It's completely customized. It's the way you want it. Um, you can migrate as you, what you need, when you need it. Um, you can, and it teaches you a great deal about how Drupal 8 works because you dive into the plugins, you dive into how entities work, how basically um, how basically all the APIs work within Drupal as well. And it also teaches you why you should hate Drupal 8 <laughs> and also why you should appreciate Drupal 8, but you have to have a lot of time and patience for that. So now we get into the whole part of how we actually get our content to uh, where it needs to go, right? We can use a manual way and just slingshot everything over and hope everything lands where it needs to. Or we can try to understand how Drupal 8's uh, migration stuff works. And the thing you need to learn right off the bat is migrations in Drupal 8 is YAML, which is far better than what was in Drupal 7, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, it's all configuration, and basically if you are doing a migration, you can actually just do migration only in YAML. You don't have to write any PHP code, which is really nice. Um, 
And these are the modules you will need to actually get started as well. The, you won't need the migrate Drupal thing unless you're going to be doing the framework and stuff, but uh, uh, it's there. Uh, now, the other thing in the migrate module is that all the migrations are very structured. They need to be under a certain directory, they need to be under a certain folder, they need to be called something. So all your migrations are going to be under the config install directory. Uh, there's going to be, they're going to be named migrate class.migration and then the name of the migration. If they're not called migrate class.migration, then basically Drupal's not going to recognize it. It's just going to be like, it's just next to the YAML file that's there that doesn't really belong to it. Uh, all your source plugins, so I'll get into the source plugins a little bit, a little bit but uh, they all go in there. The process plugins, destination plugins go in there, but this is basically, it's kind of hard to see. Mm. It makes it bigger. Ah. Mm. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, uh, basically at the top you have your config install. That's where all the uh, migrations go. And in your source, you have basically all your source and destination points. So basically, whenever you're bringing content, into Drupal, it's going to have a source plugin that's going to tell it, okay, this is the content I'm bringing over, how it's going to, uh, uh, what format does it need to be in, so I can actually map it, map it, all that stuff in. You got to have uh, process plugins that basically transform that stuff into uh, usable stuff, and then you have a destination plugin, but most of the time you're not going to have to implement the destination plugin. But if you need to, it's, it's possible to do. <coughs> okay. So now we get into the actual migration YAML breaker. Because as you know, all migrations within Drupal 8 are YAML. Uh, this is the structure of it. At the top, you have an identifier that identifies what kind of migration this is. I know this is going to be a little bit boring because uh, this is going to go into a lot of code. So, well, YAML configuration. Uh, let's get through it and then we'll get into the new stuff. Uh, so, we're going to have the identifier, we're going to have a source, uh, process, destination. These are the three types of plugins uh, available for migrations. And then we're going to have it, all the dependencies involved with each migration. Yes, so here's a sample YAML file. Um, I didn't have enough room to fit everything, so I can move it to the side, but you get the idea. Uh, the blue section here at the top is basically the identifier. We're basically saying uh, the ID, we're going to call it DN, DXD, you know, article because it's an external content that we're bringing into Drupal. I call it that, you can call it anything you want. Um, we have migration tags, so basically, if you want to tag a bunch of stuff together, this would be important in one group. You can move up. There's also a migration group. You can also import based on the group type, but uh, that basically means that uh, it shares a configuration that uh, all the other uh, migrations within that group will share. Uh, dependencies. Now, this is an important section. So, basically, let's say you change the configuration of your uh, migration file uh, and you want to re import it. If you don't have that and you uninstall the module, uh, it will uh, it will still retain that uh, configuration, and uh, and when you try to import re-enable module, it'll, say it'll complain about that it already exists. You can't really update it. It'll try to recreate it. But if you do that when you install the module, it will actually remove the configuration, and then you can re-import it. Then of course you have a label. Then of course after that, the yellow part is the source plugin. Okay, yeah. So then we have the source plugin. Now this, this is the plugin that we're implementing here called the article node, which is basically migrating over a lot of articles from RD, D7 site into DA. Then we have what is called target, and this is our database connection that we're using to get our stuff. Um, 
And then we have our process section where we are actually doing all processing, we're mapping title to title, we're taking type the default value of commitment, which is wrong. That's wrong. Uh, then we have a uh, body value. We're assigning body value to body, body format to this value. If you actually assign some property for a certain field, a certain value, then we have Lango destination, which is going to be an uh, SVU node. Uh, we're already defining what the type is going to be written, which should be article. Um, and we have a number of commands that are saying that this is dependent on the user migration. But, anyways. Okay, I think I went through all of these things. Yes. Yeah, this is just a, the same one again, just uh, in a better format that you can actually see. Um, does it, there's a bunch of processing happening. So in this one, on the other one, there's a UID stuff happening, which is like you find a vibration to get that value. Uh, yeah, and then we have destination dependencies. So these are all the destination plugin examples that are given within Drupal core, except for, I think, uh, entity reference revisions and entity group. Uh, those are uh, contrib modules. Uh, if you want to basically migrate into paragraphs, you would use entity reference revision paragraphs. Um, and if you migrate from OG into groups, basically, you'll use that. OK. So. These are all the different types of source plugins that you can use within Migrate. Uh, you can embed data directly into your YAML file to import directly. You can also use a SQL source, which we're going, we are going to be using for the demo. And you can use file base, so you can have JSON files, CSVs, XMLs, etc. Uh, so this is an example of basically a embedded data uh, example. So basically, if you're embedding data into a uh, YAML file, uh, the plugin will be embedded data. Um, you can pass in um, default language if you want to enforce the current language uh, to be English or whatever the default uh, language of the site is. Uh, if this is going to be a translation to an existing uh, uh, migration, then you're going to say that this is translation is equal to true, which is just passing in a primary into this resource. It's hard to see this, but uh, basically this is the structure of how a embedded data uh, looks like within YAML. So you have basically a key pairing uh, for everything. Uh, for the body, you basically pipe, use a pipe to signify that this is using more than one line. And uh, it's just uh, all there. And of course, everything is separate. Oh yeah, I could probably just use this. Uh, everything is basically separate with a uh, dash to indicate uh, each individual row. Um, for the SQL plugins, uh, you have basically the plugin name, which is the plugin ID. Uh, you also have a source migration. Uh, the source migration is basically a DB connection. So as you can see in the example uh, given, this is your settings of HP file within your actual Drupal 8 site. That uh, you will have your default connection, then after that you can define your source migration. You can actually call it anything you want uh, and just specify as, as your target. I use source migration. And it's just building a connection to the actual uh, site. So in this one, we're basically being a Postgres to My MySQL. Uh, migration uh, because the source is uh, a Postgres uh, site. Uh, so this is basically an example of, the, of a uh, SQL source plugin. Um, I highlighted that the file name and the class name needs to be the same. This is just obviously like practices, but I make mistakes sometimes. And. Uh, you need to specify a namespace for your uh, migrations. It always has to be Drupal, the uh, module name, plugin, migrate source. I used a previous Drupal camp uh, migration example for this. I just modified it for Drupal North, so that's why I'm using Drupal camp migrations. 
Um, and of course, uh, whenever you find any sort of plugin, you'll have this dot plot, and you'll have to have this annotation. If you don't do that, it's not, it won't recognize what your plugin is. Um, yes, it seems like this is part of this is actually code. Um, yeah. And of course, you have your uh, article note, which extends SQL base, and you inherit all the functionality involved with that. Then, of course, you have your file based uh, um, uh, source plugins. I'm not going to cover them because they're not part of uh, my great core, um, and uh, I don't have enough time to do that. So. Okay, now let's get into the process plugin. Now, the process part of every YAML migration file uh, is basically a key value pair. Uh, they, uh, they, but it also allows you to transform a lot of the stuff you're, uh, uh, you're mapping as well. For example, um, uh, okay, these are all the process plugins that are in uh, uh, Drupal 8 uh, to, get, to get you started. Uh, you most likely you won't need to implement any of these. Uh, implement your own custom one, but you can probably use these. Um, but anyway, so this is basically an example of a key value pair. You're, you're basically mapping field title with the source uh, mapping, the source field title, right? Or you're mapping, mapping field organization value to the organization name from the source. Or you're mapping the field URL, but the URI property, uh, the URL from the source. <coughs> or you can do something like this, which is basically you're passing in, you're saying the type is going to be a default value, and then you're specifying what the default value is. And uh, same thing for the uh, uh, field URL. So, Basically, you can assign sub like properties within uh, fields, um, a certain value, but you can also process what exactly those things are going to be. Or you can do something like this, uh, which is basically you're saying that this piece of content uh, belongs to a user, but you've already migrated the user through a, uh, another migration. Uh, so we can just pass in what the source UID is into that migration. It can tell us what the new UID is and it can map it back to this uh, content. So basically, if a particular user owned uh, content on the source site, now they own the same piece of content on the destination site. Uh, this is an example of uh, everything we just talked about. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it to them. Then we get into the destination plugins. Now destination plugins are basically for entities that you've uh, create a custom that uh, aren't part of Drupal 8 uh, and uh, you need a, some sort of migration path to that. Um, they basically uh, have a mandatory plugin key in which pretty much all the destination plugins have and uh, they have an optional one where you can specify a default bundle of type. This is an example of a destination plugin. Uh, and uh, basically, it's using the same name spacing, except at the end it's using destination. Um, it's uh, implementing, it's using a bunch of, uh, um, a bunch of uh, classes from different uh, uh, sources. And uh, at the bottom, it's using annotations to say that this is my custom node. Um, and if you can't read that, but this is just basically how it's laid out. Um, I'll show you that more in the demo. Okay, now we just dive into the code. And we're making good time. Okay, so here I have moved off. Mm. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so here we have a Drupal 7 site, and here we have a Drupal 8 site. We kind of like blocked off. Okay, so Drupal 7, Drupal 8. First thing is, of course, we need to ensure that. Uh, uh, oh, I'll, I'll just show you how the Drupal 7 site is. This is a base. Drupal 7 site, it's got uh, editing translations enabled, it's got English and French turned on, um, and uh, we're basically using the default article uh, energy type. Uh, I haven't really added anything to it. Uh, oh, sorry, that's, that's Drupal 8. <laughs> uh, so here's the Drupal 7 site, we have articles. Um, we have, uh, we have, I did enable title uh, module so that the title was translatable. Um, and basically it's just using body tags and image. I used the uh, develop generate module to generate a bunch of uh, uh, temporary data uh, to basically use. So if you go under uh, structure taxonomy uh, and list all these, you get a basically a set of taxonomy data that basically is in a certain for format. Uh, with sub taxonomy terms underneath each one. And uh, then we also have a whole bunch of users. So I think I generate like 50 users just, just to have. And then we have content. I generate just two pieces of article content. We can add more. Um, and basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, move users over first because uh, they rely on, they're needed uh, to generate exactly who the, who the owner of uh, taxonomies are and who the owner of articles are, right? But we also need to move taxonomy over before article because uh, uh, there's, a, there's a taxonomy term reference field on article. So basically it needs to know uh, uh, what terms it uses before it's actually there. Um, so in order to do that, on, I'm just using a default uh, D Drupal 8 site as well. So basically all the same content types exist on Drupal 8. Um, uh, but uh, I had to start doing migration. Oops, sorry, that's my alarm. Uh, that means I'm making good time. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's have a loot. Oh. Yeah, okay. Here, uh, it's hard to see, isn't it? Can you see that? Should I make that bigger? Okay, so here I have a Drupal 8 mo module that basically, um, uh, that basically uh, implements migrate, migrate plus, migrate tools, and all these are needed in order to uh, uh, basically have all access to all those plugins as well as access to all those source uh, um, uh, migration paths as well as the, all the destination migration paths. Um, you can also use migrate uh, Drupal, which is the migrate Drupal upgrade path, but for uh, today's example, we're not going to do that. And then you have basically your uh, layout. So as with any uh, layout, uh, you need a config install for all your um, uh, migrations that you're going to be doing. Uh, you're going to have a source plugin migrate uh, source for all your source files. You can have a destination uh, for all your uh, destinations. Uh, so here's all the migrations that, uh, that I wrote for this demo. Uh, one thing that I didn't cover in my slides is that uh, you can create uh, uh, groups with share configurations. So here's an example of a group. I created a group called DM External. Uh, which, okay, yeah, it's, it's the same one I used for Montreal. Uh, so uh, it basically uh, says that uh, all the migrations under this 
uh, have this dependency, their source type external database, and that uh, they share a uh, source key of legacy. Uh, legacy is basically the um, legacy is basically uh, is basically the database source that, I, that I've set up. Um, I am. It's really hard to see. But anyway, so, uh, I'm here I'm defining my, uh, my database connection as well as um, the legacy database connection to my D7 site. Um, and uh, so that's where that comes from. Um, and uh, so this group is basically going to be applied to all the um, migrations within here. Um, so I set up my uh, taxonomy migration in this way, where basically I set up my identifier, I set up my source as being taxonomy term data, which is right here, taxonomy term data. Um, uh, there's my migrate uh, uh, source. It's basically being a SQL query to a taxonomy term data uh, table on the D7 site. It's cap grabbing all these fields. Then it's saying that uh, I also, these are the actual fields that I'll be passing on as my source fields. And uh, this is the, uh, basically the key that I will be uh, using. So you basically have to define your data source. And then your prepare row, you're going to basically say, okay, uh, I kind of like cheated here a little bit because I didn't want to, uh, migrate all the vocabularies over first, so I just said that if it's, if the VID is one, I just use tags, because in Drupal 8, unlike Drupal 7, uh, VIDs are now the machine names for all the vocabulary. Um, then, you, of course, you, ha you need your parent ID, because some of the taxonomy are children of other taxonomy, so you need to capture all that information, and uh, yeah, so I'm just setting that up as my source here. Yeah. Then, of course, I'm doing all my mappings. So I'm setting TID equals to TID, VID equals to VID, name equals name, description value is equal to that. Uh, I'm setting the uh, format to rich text, um, and uh, I'm setting the weights. Then, of course, I'm doing the parent ID. Now, parent ID requires uh, more, uh, two steps because there could be some uh, taxonomy that don't have parents, so they have to be imported uh, differently so that you don't want to assign a parent ID to them. Uh, whereas others, there could be uh, taxonomy that do have parents. Uh, so in, that, in those cases, you want to basically tell migration that, okay, I want to know what the TID uh, of this taxonomy term is if it hasn't already been created yet, right? Uh, so I would pass it in to the same migration uh, to say that, um, okay, here's a TID, have you imported this yet? And it will say, yes, we have, here's the TID. Or it would say, no, we haven't. And they'll import it, and then uh, you'll get the TID out. So, uh, that, so that's it's a kind of a recursion here. Then, of course, uh, uh, they're basically oh, and the, yes. So parent ID doesn't actually map to anything on the destination side. It's just a variable that we've defined within our YAML file to hold the output of this uh, uh, processing. Then in uh, on the destination side, we do have something called parent. Uh, we're basically going to say uh, parent is going to be a default value of zero um, unless there's a source uh, specified, right? Because uh, so zero just means that this, uh, uh, this uh, person doesn't have a parent. Um, and uh, otherwise, 
we're going to use this uh, variable that we define up here called parent ID and uh, add that value there. And of course, we have our destination, text item term, and all this sort of stuff. Okay, so uh, let me see if I actually did the. Oh. I'm using Drush for pretty much everything. Um, so, uh, Drush is a really cool tool that uh, lets you import uh, items into, uh, into Drupal. Uh, it's basically a headless form of Drupal. Um, so, oh. I did term, taxonomy term migration first. I should have done user migration first. So let's go back and look at the code. <laughs> Although, did I actually map it? No, I didn't. Okay, so that works. Uh, so in order to run a migration, uh, you can either use Drush or you can use uh, uh, migrations module uh, menu within Drupal. Uh, here I uh, declared my group as uh, Drupal, Camp Drupal Camp Montreal um, and there's an unexpected error. That's interesting. Uh, what happened there? Exception. Okay, interesting. Okay, I'm just going to use Drush for this example. <laughs> yeah. uh, so basically, I'm going to do um, I'm going to migrate in uh, the taxonomy terms. I'm uh, just making sh here we can see that uh, we have ten uh, taxonomy terms that uh, need to be migrated over. Uh, there's ten unprocessed, uh, zero have been imported. So uh, Drush MI, uh, which is migrate import, or you can actually write out migrate. Uh, import and then the name of the migration D -N -E -X -T -D -Z, taxonomy oops taxonomy and uh, term yes you're right okay and if you run that you get this saying, oh, I processed 10 items, created 10, zero were updated, zero failed, zero ignored. And uh, we can go over to our Drupal 8 site and go under structure, taxonomy, list terms. And here's all our terms with all their uh, structure and everything. Pretty neat. Uh, and if you go onto our Drupal 7 site, Go under structure, taxonomy to verify. We have all the same terms. The order is reversed because it brought in the first items first and so forth. So um, there's a little bit sort order here. But uh, all the, uh, what do you call it, uh, um, the, all the parents have the same kids and so forth. Uh, okay, so let's do the user migration. The user migration is set up pretty much the same way. Um, it's doing a lot of, let's see. Okay, yeah, so user migration is doing pretty much the same stuff. It's basically using the user import source plugin that I've defined, using this target source migration. Um, Yeah, and uh, basically it's uh, mapping all the fields accordingly and so forth, mapping back to um, uh, the users. You know, it's also doing a fallback to site default for all the LAN codes to true and false for the LAN code. Uh, this is basically a, another uh, parameter you can pass into a particular plugin if it defines it that. Uh, um, you can set back to the site default. Um, now I'm going to run the user migration, Drush MI DM 
xt db user. Um, now this is gonna work, but there's gonna be a couple errors to check in the results overnight. But uh, there you go. So it created two failed in two because it's trying to import admin, which already exists on the uh, D8 site. And it was also trying to um, update admin, which it couldn't do because of, yeah. Uh, so it failed twice uh, and basically created all the 50 items that are there. Um, and we can see that if you go under uh, people on the D8 site, um, here's all the, here's the admin and all the other users um, that are there. The reason that the um, create date is whatever is because the dual data used uh, basically generates it for like, uh, for like old records. Uh, it just fakes old data. Now, of course, let's get into the article migration. Article migration is basically a node migration. It's going to basically call the UID uh, from the uh, user um, users. It's also going to, um, is this the article one? Oh, that's the translation of the articles. Yeah. So this is the article migration. It's going to call the UID, same thing. It's going to basically say that the, we're going to use the language uh, Lang code is basically what uh, it is in D8. It was language in Drupal 7. Uh, we're going to basically assign the language to Lang code. We're going to say that uh, we want all the tags within uh, the, the tags field in Drupal 7. But because it could, ha it could be a one to many uh, value field, we're going to iterate over each one and process it uh, individually. Uh, so we're going to pass it to the taxonomy term. Um, uh, migration and get back the TID. Um, and at the end, we're just going to map it back to the entity node. And we're also going to say that this base, this migration depends on these two. Don't run this unless those have already run. So let's uh, run it. It's going to probably say, let's see. Oh, yeah, node. There you go, we created two. Uh, so if we go into our site, here we have uh, two records. Now if we switch over to French side, it's just gonna say, welcome to Drupal, because there's no French translations for those nodes. But if you, uh, so if you look at the uh, translation uh, migration, The only things that the translation migration is doing differently is that it's setting translations to true within the source. Um, it's also saying that get the node ID for this uh, uh, this uh, node from the uh, source migration for this. Basically, we've imported it already. We're going to grab the NID that they created in doing that migration and assign it to the NID in this one. We're also going to say that the uh, lang language is going to be whatever the translation language is going to be. Um, and at the end, we're going to say that content translation source is going to be uh, the default value of EN, which is the, the language coming from the source migration. Uh, and of course, at the end, uh, there's the destination. We're going to say that this is basically adding a, de a translation to a a uh, node that already exists, uh, so set translations equals a true there too. Okay, let's run that too. You guys see this? There you go. So it basically said uh, I created two translations um, for uh, the content that's there. And if you go back to the site and switch over to French, uh, we have the same uh, content but in French. And we can see that it is a translation because uh, if we 
are in this node, and we switch over to English, there's the English translation for my node. Uh, okay, and if you go back, and if let's say let's try adding another piece of content, uh, add content article, um, hello, Drupal North. I can't spell right now. Uh, we can add a tag. Hello. And save. And if you go back to our Drupal 8 uh, migrate st status, you can see that since we added that one node, we have an additional article that's ready to migrate over. Um, and if you run migration now, it'll basically import the, just that one particular node that hasn't been done. But if you wanted to make changes to the existing stuff, you can also pass in a dev slash update command that will update the existing stuff too. So if we run <coughs> this, uh, we see that it created another one. Um, go back home. There's the Hello Drupal uh, North 2017. Yeah, D7 site. Oh, am I in D7 site? Okay. Uh, there you go. There's Hello Drupal North 2017. And if you switch over to our French translations, uh, you'll see that. There's no French translation, so you're only seeing the other two. And if you go back to the Drupal 7 site and we actually translate this piece of content in French. <laughs> uh, sure, I know that. <laughs> uh, and we save it. That's weird. It didn't, uh, hmm. it added, that's weird, in English. Am I using title field? I am using title field. That's oh, weird. Yeah. There you go. And if we uh, uh, do Trans. It shows that we import another one, and if you go back to our Drupal 8 site um, and refresh it, there you go. We have Hello Drupal North 2017 French. So there you go. New little translations. Okay, let's start back in here, and we are done. So any questions? Yes. Fine. Yes. We've, we've viewed this module extensively, and you, um, so FID is inside the body. Yes. Um, one thing your approach with that is like a, I think it's a post process for us that we've had to work with, but. You can actually write a process plugin that actually uh, uh, read, basically, um, you can write a process plugin to do that. There's also the UUID link module that's also being worked on. Um, but uh, I would, what I've done in the past is I've just written a process plugin for the actual body that basically it goes in and parses to see if there's any f f file IDs and stuff like that. If it's in it, then it actually does the, uh, the migration lookup for that file to see what the actual file ID is in Drupal 8 side and uh, then just, re just uh, replaces that value. That's a post process. Yeah. You can do it on post process too, but uh, or you can actually do a separate migration to do that. I think that's probably the wiser way of going about it um, to do it on post process. Yeah. Yes. Is that way of running migration to only update one node? To update only one node? Yes. 
Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, that uh, basically you can use migrations to do that, but you can also it, uh, run post-process operations that update other nodes related to it. So let's say uh, you had uh, uh, a bunch of uh, hmm, what's content that relates to other content. Okay, but anyway, so let's say you're basically importing a bunch of paragraphs and you want to assign them to a particular node. Uh, you can either have two migrations to do that or you can have like one and you can actually implement an event subscriber. Uh, event subscribers are basically, uh, if you're not familiar with Drupal 7, but in Drupal 7 there was like a prepare row, there was uh, stuff to do after uh, the migration runs, right? Um, so all that stuff is now within something which is called event subscriber, right? It's a class you implement and basically after the migration happens, you get the uh, formatted destination row back and you can uh, use that to update the existing nodes or existing content. Uh, to give you an example of that, I do have an ex example of that. Uh, So this is uh, basically the open data migrations that we did for the government of Canada. Uh, in here we implement a uh, migration subscriber. Um, and in this, uh, if you keep on going down, we have constructs, we have... Uh, so this is basically on migration post import. So after the import happens, execute this command, right? So we're basically setting the home page to, uh, to be a certain thing. Uh, we're also doing on migrate post row save, we're saying that if the migration is this, uh, we want to uh, add votes to, the, to those migrations. So basically if you had a whole bunch of, uh, uh, we used the voting API on Drupal 7 side, and we basically uh, used flag on Drupal 8, and we wanted to basically we import all the uh, votes over, and then we wanted to assign them to a particular node. Uh, so we uh, imported all the nodes, and once the node is saved, we said, okay, are there any votes associated with that uh, uh, node? Uh, let's assign it to that node. Um, so this gives you an example. All this code is on github.com open data od. Um, I'll go back to my slides and uh, so you have uh, all this, all these links. Uh, but everything is pretty much there. Do you have any other questions or did I answer your question? Or, okay. Any questions? No? Okay, so uh, make sure to come up here if you want to win a Google Home. I can give you some stickers. And uh, also check out our booths. You can pick up one of these things. It's a snap bracelet. It's now to your wrist. It's really cool. And it's USB. And it's USB. It's a USB key too. So, yeah, worth it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.